hello creative students welcome to another accounting video in this video we'll be looking at budgeting you know but this topic consists of three things you have your debtors payment your debtors collection schedule your creditors payment schedule you also have your analysis of the cash budget so in creative you won't be asked to prepare the cash budget but you'll be asked to analyze it to analyze the cash budget right and you know from previous grades you've been preparing the better's collection schedule and the creditors payment schedule those ones you know but it's just the revision so to remind you a cash budget is a forecast of cash receipts and cash payments meaning we are predicting the cash payment and cash receipts we're going to receive in the future purpose is to focus future receipts and payments of course projected income statement a forecast of income and expenses right and its purpose is to forecast future profits or losses, right? So these ones, you actually did them last year properly, but you won't be asked to prepare them in grade 12. Data's collect collection schedule, a schedule or plan of how the business will collect money from its data, meaning it's a plan on how. So if data, since data they buy from us on credit, the data's collection schedule is going to show the amounts that we're expecting to receive from them. Uh, then its purpose is to focus receipts from debtors actually creditors payment schedule is a schedule plan of how the business will pay its creditors right so it's the opposite of the debtors collection schedule we are forecasting payments to creditors that's its purpose to say that in general we're, we're going to pay this much in february we're going to pay this much much we're going to pay this much right and now let's look at the sales part so a business main source of income is sales these can be for cash or credit or on credit so what's important about this statement guys is that since we'll be doing the data's collection schedule we must focus on credit sales right so every time you're giving cash sales you focus on credit sales so cash sales are received immediately and will be entered as receipt on as a receipt on the cash budget in the month of sale of course because cash sales we get the money as the customer buys the money from credit sales will only be collected from debtors in the future hence we are doing the debtors collection schedule right because as customers buy on us on credit they don't pay now but they will pay in the future so we are estimating not estimating we are budgeting to show that we're going to receive this much because we know the actual amounts we receive but some it may happen that they do not pay then they'll become bad debt Bad debtors. We also budget for such using a past trends. The cash and credit sales may need to be calculated from the given information. Of course, you'll be given information to calculate the cash or credit sales. Another thing I want to explain, which is the opposite of this, is your cash, your credit purchases. Right? You have your credit purchases. So even us as the business, when you have purchased from a creditor will need to pay and we pay most of the time they'll say we pay in the month following the month of sale right to so that we can qualify for a discount meaning we pay in around in the next month we pay in the next month right generally we pay in the next month but you will be guided by the question and we we can be offered a discount we can be offered a discount and you know that that discount is called discount receive so but for our data as you'll see that they don't all pay on in the month following the month the, the month of sale or they don't pay at the same time some pay in the month that we sold to them meaning if we sold to a data in January he or she may pay in January, some pay in the next month, some pay two months after, some do not pay at all. So you'll see. So you'll be given percentages. You'll be given percentages. For example, you'll be told that for data's collection for data's collection schedule, you'll be told that probably 30% of the data's pay in the same month of sale. Right? And maybe you the question then say 60% they pay in the following month 
or in the month following month of say let me say in the month following month of sale what does it mean it means if we sold to this data in january if we sold to this data in january when he will he pay in february but for this for this first one if we sold to the data in january sold we will pay he will pay in january right and most likely a discount he may, he may be offered a discount right and then then maybe they say eight percent pay eight percent pay two months after the month of sale So if he paid, if we sold to to her, Jen, she will pay in March, right? Pay in March. So if you add these, they'll give you ninety eight percent, right? And it must give us hundred. So sometimes you'll have the two percent remaining as bad debtors. These will be our bad debts. They must give you hundred percent because of course we expect to collect the money. From all the data we sold to, right? That's why it must be hundred percent. So you'll be receiving something like this. So you'll be asked to prepare probably. Let's say maybe you'll be asked to prepare the cash, the data collection schedule from January to March. So it 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 simply means that you will have three columns, right? January, February, and March. You have three columns. Under these columns, this is where you're going to enter the amounts that you're expecting to receive. That you're expecting to receive. Right? So, if you will be giving the sales from Gen December, sales from, let's say these are your sales, sales from December, January, February, and March, you'll be giving amounts. You must make sure that you use this amount. You must make sure that you use this amount. So it means you'll have your months here, December, January, February, March. So these months, they are the months for which you were given the sales. The credit sales amount, that's highly important, the credit sales amount. And then these months here, they are the months for which you are preparing the budget. The that has collection schedule right so it's highly important so it means if you have the sales for december as ten thousand, the credit sales right so it's let's just make a column for credit sales it makes things easier so you must make the column for credit sales to make things easier so if you had credit sales for december for ten thousand, so you're going to use this you're going to use these percentages to know how much you're going to collect from each debt right in the months that are that are following so of course using this you know that that this ten thousand sales that we made this in december 30 percent of the amount will be received in december 60 percent will be received in january and then eight percent will be received in february then you'll have your bad debts from there on right because there's no money that you receive in Three months for the month of six. But for January, we're going to receive 30%. Right? In January. And 60% in February. And March. 8%. Right? Then you'll have 2% of your data. Right? So, guys, it's easy. You do that for all the months. You do that for all the months. You do that for all the months. Then you'll add the totals. Right? Fine. And then for your creditors payment schedule, it's also easy. For your creditors payment schedule, it's also easy. So let's look at your creditors payment schedule, guys. For creditors payment schedule, most of the time, the question will say, 
the stock the, the opening balance the opening balance of the stock is maintained every month right stock base the same stock base level is maintained every month So what this means is that because we're dealing with credit purchases, right? So what this means is that if this is January and our trading stock balance is ten thousand and we buy on credit for five thousand and we buy for cash three thousand, then we sell stock, then we sell stock with Eight thousand, or, or let me say, we sell stock with nine thousand. Then we sell stock with nine thousand. What it means is that our balance will be eighteen thousand minus nine thousand. Closing balance of the trading stock. Do you see it's now different because opening was ten thousand. So what it means is that the business must by how how much stock to replace the to make the opening balance to always be ten thousand it must buy stock worth one thousand more right that's what it means right that's what it means guys so that's how you maintain a fixed stock base level that's how you maintain the same stock base level to try and make the opening balance in the next month to always be the same. So that means to buy it at the end of the month. It won't buy it next month. At the beginning, it will buy it at the end of the month. Right. So that's highly important, guys. That's highly important to understand. So that's that's what that's the kind of technical method that the examiners like to test on. Right. And then you follow the same principles as your as your 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 data collection schedule right in this case you would have bought stock with five thousand on credit and then you just ask yourself when are we paying it probably the month following or 30 days after or in the same month right so it's easy because we're not dealing with many data we are dealing with ourselves only right that's what makes it easy so from this example above, since this is what it had bought, this 5,000 is what it had bought in general for credit, it may pay, it, depending on the business, whether it pays its creditors the following month or the same month. So it may pay this the following month or the same month, right? It will depend on the business. And then, so, and this 1,000, that if it, it is, Let's assume that it was on credit. This 1000 may be paid. It depends because it's purchased at the end of the month. It may be paid in the same following month as well. So you'll see it will depend. But what I want to illustrate now is let's go to February. Let's take this file and go to February. So now the total stock balance is 10,000. And then let's just say we sold stock worth 2000. Sold. So do you understand that this is our cost of sales, right? So it means our closing balance is 8,000. But what are we trying to maintain? We are trying to maintain a closing balance of 10,000. So we are going to buy how much? 2,000 more stock. You can go, you're going to buy 2,000 more. Whether it's on credit or on cash, we're going to add 2,000 more. So what I'm trying to say is that in the question, you'll be given cost of sales only when we are maintaining a fixed base level fixed base level of the stock you'll be given the cost of sales just know that whatever you have sold is what you have to replace therefore this cost of sales will help you calculate your purchases right they can be cash or credit they'll give you a percentage of the cash or of the credit right so you must always know that your cost of sales they will be what you will represent your purchases it is what you'll have to replace right it is what you have to replace right you must always know 
even in this example it is illustrated because if you calculate all your purchases for the month of january they will amount to five thousand plus one thousand plus three thousand which is equals to nine thousand you see this is your purchases be it cash or credit it is but your purchases you get it from the cost of sales right the cost of sales of nine thousand so always make sure that or remember that your purchases they are equals to your cost of sales whatever that you saw you must replace when dealing with what method maintaining if the same base level of stock right guys so that's just it for this video i'll do an example on the creditors and debtors collection schedule thank you very much